Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. In this video we're going to press out the outer shell or cup for tapered wheel bearings and press in some new ones in a hub. Now just like every job you want to make sure you have all the parts before you get started and if you're changing bearings on a hub you're going to need an inner bearing, the side that goes inside towards the spindle the outer one, this would be the outer bearing, the side that would be towards the wheel side or the outside of the car. And you're also going to need a seal. Now when you're choosing your bearings, there are different uh, brands, different grades. Uh, this is an SKF bearing. They make really good bearings. There are Timken bearings. This just happens to a BCA bearing. Uh, so choose your bearings wisely. They can come in different grades of material. And depending on where they're made, the quality of the steel and how they're going to wear. You're also going to need the seal for the inside bearing. And taper bearings always come in match sets. You'd want to try to buy them in match sets. They're pretty cheap. I mean, we're talking about eight, ten bucks for a bearing. You'll have the inner cup, and this is the part we're going to press out of the hub and press in a new one. And then you have the bearing part, and the bearing has the, the inner cup here. And it has the cage on it that holds all of the tapered bearings. And all these bearings are in here, they're tapered. And when they're inside there, that's what rolls around, locks onto the shaft, and that's where your bearing, how your bearing works. And on the back of the, the bearing that goes inside or closest to the inside of the car, this dust cover or the seal gets pressed in in the back, and this is what protects the bearing, the back of the cage here, from dust getting inside the bearing. And you'll see how that gets pressed in. Now here's the hub, this is the outside part where the nut goes from the wheel. So I'm going to take that and set that aside. And take a quick look at the inner cup. Okay, we'll be able to see more once we get that out of there. Now we'll flip it over. Here's our seal. So I put a big screwdriver in here. Pop the seal out just like that. Then I'll be able to get the, the inner bearing out. Set that aside. Quick look. And that was in pretty bad shape. Now, here's one thing. If you're doing this job, uh, it pays to have the right amount of grease. You don't want to have too much grease. If you look inside here, I'm going to scrape around in here. If I go inside this hub like this, just scrape around, this hub is full of grease. You don't need that much grease. Look at that. Grease is probably however many years old and someone just packed the inside of this hub with grease. Completely unnecessary. Doesn't do anything. Just a waste of grease and it's some place for all of the dust to collect and potentially uh, get inside the bearing and ruin the bearing. So don't over grease a bearing. It doesn't pay. So I'm going to clean this up and then we'll pop out the inner. We'll pop out the cup on that side and that side. Now to get the cups out of there, we're going to have to use a hammer and a punch. And in order to help, if you look inside here, usually the hub will have a slot. If you look in here very carefully, I'll see if I can get it. There's a slot. There's a slot right there, and there's also a slot on this side. And that is where I'm going to rest the punch in order to push this cup out this side. Before you get started, it kind of pays to make sure you have the right replacement part. The bearing cup that goes in here is kind of a press fit, so you want to make sure you have the right size. They do come in different sizes, and sometimes they're as close as three thousandths of an inch, so make sure you have the right size. That one looks all right, feels okay. And this one goes in that recess, so drops down in there, and that one's going to be the right size. So I have the right parts before I press the old ones out. Now, in order to pop this out of here, I can't just lay this flat on the surface because I want to push it out of this this opening here in the hub. So I'm just going to suspend the so suspend the hub off a couple pieces of metal. I have these flat pieces of steel. I can tell you a great story about what these are. If anybody knows what these are, where these came from, I'll give you a, a keychain or I'll give you a t-shirt or something. If you know what this is, let me uh, here, I'll show you real quick. I, I have two of them. I actually have a bunch, but if you can tell me what this came from. I will give you a t-shirt. 
But anyway, um, so I'm going to suspend that in between these two, just like that. And as I look down there, I'm going to take, I have a large drift, and I'm going to sit it in those slots that are there. I'm just going to tap it with a hammer and start to tap it free to get it out of there. It usually comes out pretty easy. Just go from side to side and don't try and do it all at once. Just push it out of there uh, a little bit at a time. Okay, I got the one side out. You can flip it over and repeat the process. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to inspect the parts I took out to see how they were wearing. And this is the inner one. And as I roll, rotate this around, I can see the surface is nice and even. It looks like the bearing was rolling nice and even in there. It's centered within the whole cup itself. And that looks in pretty good shape. So now let's take a look at the other one. This will be the outer one, the one that faces the outside of the vehicle. And I found a couple things in here that were indicators of why I was getting a thumping, thumping noise or a whirring sound, like a, either a roar or a thump, 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 thump the kind of sound you feel coming from the wheel bearing, a vibration. And right here you can see there's an inclusion right there. There's like a uh, inclusion. It looks like it was something was pounded out. There's a pretty big pock mark. I look under in uh, magnification here, and there's a, a kind of a hole in the material. And I don't know how it got there, and there's one right next to it right there. And it looks like the bearing, and you can see how it's kind of shiny here, was riding a little bit harder on the outside there. And um, let me see if I can focus this a little better because it's really important to see. Uh, if you get if you get something in the bearing, and the bearing just rolls around and keeps uh, riding on it, it's called pound out. Kind of like the same thing you get with a, a, a valve in a cylinder head. And that material just continued to, to, to pound on right on there. So this uh, this is a bad part. This is why I'm changing the bearings. You could hear it. You could feel it in the steering. A little bit of vibration there. And that, there it is. That's what caused it right there. Now the best way to do this is actually press it in. But if you don't have a press, you can still do it just by tapping it in place. And if I measure this, if I take this bearing, and if I measure this bearing, I'm sorry, this bearing cap, this uh, cup, this is just about... Uh, 20 thousandths of an inch under two inches. Okay, and I have a socket here. This is a one and a half inch socket, and this socket for a diameter is about 15 thousandths bigger in diameter than the cup I want to press in. And if you see, if I hold these together like that, I'm going to have surface contact. So I can put even pressure all the way around this cup when I press it in. So I'm just going to put a little, a little WD on there just to give me a little bit of help. I'll sit that there just like that. Now I want to keep this as square as possible, so I'm going to sit my socket on there, and I want to tap just around to get it started. Get it started. And you'll see it get started. And you see it's crooked, so I want to straighten it out. Just like that. So you want to push it straight in. So just go side to side. And you see it goes in pretty quick. It's a press fit, but it's not that bad. Of course, don't have stuff on your table that's going to fall off while you're putting that in there. So now I'm getting down to the point where the socket is going to start hitting that. So I'm going to stop and take my drift. I'm just going to start to tap this down very, very lightly side to side. Go 
we're on the diameter. And you'll know, you'll know when you have it seated when you look in the back and you can see it's seated fully against the back, which it is already. So it doesn't take that much. And I'll do the same thing for the, for the outer bearing. You'll know you have it in there all the way when you hear the sound change. It's in there all the way. Now obviously you want to make sure when you're doing this if you don't have the right tool you don't want to put a burr on the edge, you don't want to hit it, you don't want to scratch the surface. Be careful not to damage that in any way. Put my bearing in there. Just give it a quick turn so it feels, just to see how it feels. Nice and smooth. Okay, now we're going to flip this over. We're going to pack the bearing and put in our seal. Lots of ways to pack a bearing, and I just did this in a recent video. My favorite way is just to put some grease in my palm, like that, and keep ro rotating and nipping off some grease and going around just to fill up the bearing. And you'll know when you're getting there when the grease starts coming out of the cage around the, the bearings. Once the grease comes out of the other side, you know it got it fully packed. Now we just set the bearing in place. Just going to take some extra grease and pack it around the bearing on the outside. Like that. Wipe off the excess. Now we're ready for the seal, and the seal is not pressed in that hard. The rubber part or that open part goes in, and just get it. You can almost kind of feel it center center in there. All right, we have a nice clean spindle here. Have our hub ready to roll with our with our um, cup pressed in the front there. Everything's ready to roll in the back. And slide this on. Should be a nice snug fit. And have my other bearing, which is already packed. I'll push that in place like that. Give it a quick spin, make sure it all Good, nice and smooth. I have my washer for the rotation. And now it's time to set our preload. Put the nut on, clean it off. So I have a clean nut. <laughs> clean nut. Um, let's set the preload. This happens to be one and the sixteenth nut, so setting your preload. And I just did this in another video. Now when you're, when you're doing this, when you're pushing this on here, if you, if you push this on and you're moving your ratchet and if you feel, feel something move, there's a possibility if you didn't seat either one of the, the uh, inner cup or the outer cup, if those are not seated or pressed all the way in, you, you could feel it move. And I don't have that problem. That's nice and tight. So, so I'm going to back this up, have to turn, make sure it rolls. And again, millions of schools of thought. I've heard 150 different ways on how to do this from many different people over the years. But I like to go till it's tight, real tight. Then I loosen it up one half a turn. Then I bring it back until it just starts to feel resistance. I mean, it, you, could, you could almost just take the, the ratchet and drop it. I mean, it's, it's really not that much. And, and that's not too bad right there. If you're more of a perfectionist,
You could put a torque wrench on here, maybe add, you could loosen this up, loosen it up, and then go back and put maybe 12, 12 inch pounds, 12 to 14 inch pounds, which is one foot pound. You put a pound on a 12 inch wrench, that's one foot pound right there. So that's about it right there, and that's all you need to do. Now when you're finished changing your bearings, take it for a little ride, come back and check it. If the hub is warm or hot, you have too much preload, so back it off, maybe a quarter of a turn. If it's loose, you got a little bit of play, not enough preload, so add a quarter turn. And if there's no problems, you did it right the first time. Now, if you have any idea what this is, and if you have a guess, leave it below in the comments section, and the first person to get it right will get a Peace Garage t-shirt. Thanks for stopping by Peace Garage.